Well, today's episode is going to be a bit of a short one. As you know, we just started the weekend. We're going to do Choco Pro 265 with three matches, with the main event being the Asia Dream Tag Team titles on the line. CDK are being challenged by Black Komachi, Antonio Honda, and Tokiko Kiyohara. And of course, we cannot forget NWA USA. A lot of interesting took place. And there's one that kind of really was interesting. So we'll get to all of that. And of course, a couple of news updates that's been going on in the world of pro wrestling. So, get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Hey everyone, welcome to the Lead at Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jared here. So let's begin with Choco Pro 265. We're almost done to the getting to the se- se- season finale for this. So our opening match, we have the new girl, Mia. Yo, uh, Yosiba, Yosuba, taking on the legend, one of the best high speedsters we know today, Kairi, uh, Kai, uh, Coyote Yonayama. Now, this is an interesting challenge for her, as you know. Uh, Yonayama is a fast-paced wrestler, but however, there are some moments that you probably guess the way Yonayama works. She likes to play a little bit of dirty games, but that didn't stop um, Mia from trying to obtain it. But however, once again... She fell victim into the O'Connor roll. One, two, three. Mia wins another. Now, keep in mind, Mia is new, but she will develop her tradecraft soon enough. Next up, we have tag team action. Chiko Shikawa teaming up with Sayaka once again. They take on Sayaka Obihiro and our current Super Asia champion, Balanaki. Now, keep in mind, I know that Balinaki has challenged before by Chi many times, and I know Sayaka has dealt with both Chi and Sayaka before. This is a very interesting development. Now, if either Sayaka or Chi pin Balinaki, they do get an opportunity for the Super Asia Championship. But at the moment, they have to get through everything. Now, keep in mind, Chi's only main weapon is her too much energy. As you know, you've seen her out, she runs, but that doesn't work. However, every mo- move that uh, Chi tried to make it somehow been dodged. Now keep in mind, Chi and Balinaki know each other way too well, so they could um, instantly um, change things. But I thought this match was going to end in a time limit draw, but luckily it did not. It was Balinaki who picked up the win by pinning Chi Koshika once he rolled her up. One, two, three, it was done. Now, our next match, which is our main event, is the championship match. The Asian Dream Tag Team titles. We have Black Kamachi, Tokiko Kiyohara, and Antonio Honda to take on CDK, Masahiro Takanashi, and Chris Brooks. Now, keep in mind, I know that um, Black Kamachi have tried everything in their power to obtain these towers, these these belts. However, last time when they were in a non-title matchup, Antonio thought that he won, but apparently it wasn't a title match, so basically it was not on the line. So this time they have to put up the game face. Now the obvious question was, will this be the day a CDK loses the tag team titles? Because we have seen how formidable Black Kamachi can be. And you know, with our usual tricks, you know, uh, Tony Honda try to make, do his little bit of comedy bits, uh, playing the guitar, you know, using the fans. All of that played out. But however, they were it. Black Kamachi was able to pick up a little bit of momentum, but it wasn't no good until... Um, what, what was it? It was Masa with the code red that sealed the deal onto took uh onto um what's his name onto Honda to pick up the re- re- the win in order to retain the titles. 
Now our Jonkin tournament. This is a very difficult one. I couldn't determine. Once again, Balanaki got removed from the first round. You know, you know, I, if May Sugar was here, she would say, how dare you? You know, but uh, I was surprised the person who won was Sayaka. I, it's been, what, a couple of months since she won this, but good for her. So there's that. Now, for friendly reminder, um, Balanaki will be leaving soon. But before he does, he will put the Super Asia Championship on the line against Tamra from Heat Up. You know, it's another promotion elsewhere. Uh, as you know, Tamra picked up the pinfall on Balinaki the last last week, so basically he gets a title opportunity. So can't wait to see that. So let's move on to our last review: NWA USA. Okay, NWA USA opened up with a handicap match in the women's division. We have Max the Impaler, but she wasn't alone. By her corner, she had Gags the Gimp. She takes on the very unlikely duo of Natalia Morkova and Terrence Earl. Now, keep in mind, these two are always fighting over the dang spotlight. Now, we know Max the Impaler, she can crush them. So, most likely, you can guess this is not going to end well. But, it did not end well for Terrence Earl, mostly because... The unexpected surprise was Gags the Gimp. Yes, you heard me, folks. Now, we look at Max the Impaler, all powerful. She can crush you, send you straight to the wasteland. But it was Gags the Gimp that licked Taryn Terrell. <laughs> and that causes the whole thing. But it did give, of course, Max the Impaler to apply the wasteland onto Taryn Terrell to pick up the win. So, <laughs> that thought it was so funny. Now, we do get an interview with Jamie Stanley. Uh, Stanley, as you know, he has man been managing Kobe Crino. He thinks that Kobe Crino will have a piece of a cake match at hard times against Davy Richards. Now, keep in mind, Davy Richards is a veteran of the game. You know he is an extra submission, but can Kobe Crino do that? Well, Stanley thinks he's confident enough that he will, but we'll see when we get to hard times. Now, our next interview is Kerry Morton. Now, keep in mind, Kerry Morton has a lot of things on his mind. As you know, he has the junior heavyweight title match at hard times against Homicide. And then, of course, that whole situation with him and, of course, the Fixers. Keep in mind, the Fixers have been dominating, again, have tormented the Mortons many times over thanks to Kobe Crino. But it appears that the Fixers have a new leaf. So that's the unanswered question, like, why they're changing a new leaf was it because they're now the, the nwa u.s tag team champions i don't know now our next match we have the ill begun alex taylor and jeremiah plucking teaming up with wrecking ball ligurski of the fixers they take on the now um vic delicious and hale collins they team up with magic jake dumas as you know for the fixers interviewed uh Magic ja uh, Jack, uh, basically they kind of accuse him of witchcraft and all that stuff because he's a magician, and it was a pretty good match. But however, I think the biggest uh story is that Wrecking Ball was the last person who was the freshest. He was the one that sealed the 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 match by doing an amazing power slam on Delicious, and of course ending it with him picking up a good win. Now we get our next interview flip. Gordon by May Valentine. He talks about Kobe Crano taking him on this coming uh, power episode on Tuesday. He knows that he's dealing with the second generation, so this is going to be a big challenge for himself, but he is looking forward to it, to meeting Kobe Crano down the way. Then, as you know, we have another ridiculous Stanley Drills. He brings in Milkmaid. Now, I don't know what the hell was that all about, but I can skip that because it made no absolute sense. Our next match, we have Misa Kate versus Kenzie Page. Now, keep in mind, Misa Kate and her tag partner, Maddie, were able to pin the current uh, NWA Women's Ch Tag Team Champions. Uh, the uh, Pretty Empower, uh, Eleanor Envy and uh, Kenza pa Kenzie Page, and they picked up the pinfall. So that's going to happen, but you probably can guess. This is, of course, Kenzie Page trying to get re a revenge for that particular loss. And that kind of did fade out, but it was like a uh, 
but a, a very interesting move that, of course, uh, Kenzie Page was able to pull. I think he she pulled out a, cra a cravat type submission that forced her to tap out. So we'll see what happens in hard times, how that plays out. Now, our next interview is with Jay Bradley. May Valentine spreads out. Bradley does the same thing again, once again, with the whole thing with the Bolt Mortons and all this and that. But he is going to face uh, Ricky Morton right in the, main, in the main event. Now, back in the podium with Kyle Davis, he brings in the boss, William Patrick Corgan, along with Wrecking Ball Ligurski. Now, the idea what is going on, he is getting, they're giving them brand new titles because the ones that the fixers have is only temporary. This is something we've seen with NWA. I mean, with AEW, if you remember, AEW had the TNT title, but it was not 100% finished until it came out. But now it's like they, they made it more better. But Wrecking Ball refuses to give up his title, the one he has. He likes the red and white and blue, and he has sharpened the name Fixers on it. So he refuses to give it up. He stood his ground against the boss, and that's kind of crazy. But I don't know what uh, Billy... Corgan will do, but we'll see what happens then. Now, our main event, we got Jay Bradley versus uh, Ricky Moore. Now, this is a very interesting matchup, but I can tell you this match ended with a power slam by uh, Jay Bradley and giving uh, giving him the win. So, that's pretty much what took place on NWA USA. I can't wait to see what's going to happen on NWA Power on Tuesday. So, I think right now, let's move on with news updates. Okay, as you know, this is the weekend. We are on October 29th. Now, if you guys are planning to watch GCW tonight, uh, I don't know if you guys have Twitter or you've been following on on the Twitter, on any social media where GCW talks about. Uh, due to the circumstances, uh, Jacob Fatu will not be able to participate in tonight's event where he and Juicy Fanal will be in a steel cage match take on uh, Char Starboy Charlie and Joey Janela. But however, it was changed that now we're going to have Starboy Charlie and Juicy for now. That's going to be a very interesting development. So I can't wait to see that. Now, once again, as you know, there has been, ever since the, the regime of WWE has changed, we've been seeing a lot of wrestlers coming back. I know some of you who know which wrestlers were released, you would like to see back. What apparently from Fightful Select, they reported that WWE are interested in and bringing back Tegan Knox. Now, keep in mind, there were a lot of controversy, a lot with people saying, I mean, we know she came back for, to, when she was still in NXT. She came back with an injury from an injury, and then she showed up all of a sudden in SmackDown. She didn't get a good run and that sort of thing. We don't know exactly if she's going to have the same kind of treatment where, you know, they have Sky and, uh, and Dakota, you know, already jumping into the main roster. That is still unclear. But I uh, would say... With, it will, it could happen. Last thing I heard from Tegan Knox, she it was dealing with, of course, her work visa. As you know, when she was released, she was unable to work any other promotion in the country since so she is not native here of the of the U.S. I think she's Welsh, so that kind of plays out its own way. So hopefully, if that's the case, then we'll be all happy. Now, here's an interesting that this one was reported by Wrestling Observer. As you know, we saw something interesting with MJF. There has been talks from the executives of the AEW saying they're rooting to have him change to become a babyface. Now, I don't to be the babyface of this generation. Now, we have seen MJF as a babyface, but that was in almost what two years ago, back in 2019 when AEW started. Remember, he was alongside with Cody back then. That was like close enough to being a babyface, but from then on, we seen him mostly was a heel. We don't know if if that's the idea what they want. I mean, my brother and I have talked about this. Like, it feels like he's turning to a baby face. But I'm not sure if that would suit him. We know that he can play well as a heel. But we'd, we will just have to wait and see how that plays out. We know he will be at full gear to take on John Moxley for the AEW World title. We'll just wait and see when that day comes. So I think that's pretty much it. So let's... uh call it a day. 
Well, I hope everybody enjoys this very short episode. Coming up, I will be doing two GCW events that featured wrestling promotions from Mexico, where it's like they're challenging Vanguardia and so uh, Zona 23. Uh, these are also part of the same, you know, deathmatch world that they're living. Uh, can't wait to see that. Um, also considering watching pro wrestling Noah's demolition stage that took place recently on the 16th, which I really, really want to see. And of course, we got New Japan Strong with Adam uh, Attack. So that's going to be it. If there's any news updates, I would definitely would put those as well. So I think that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys on the next DWZ episode. So I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.